Hello, welcome to Switched On Gaming. Paul speaking. Welcome to a look at a brand new Nintendo Switch game being released on the 3rd of February. And this is Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. This is actually a remake of a game or a re release of a game that came out in 2014, uh, which originally came out on the old um, consoles and Windows. So it was on PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox 360. Also saw a port to the Xbox One. Finally, it comes to the Nintendo Switch some seven and a bit years later. So this is an adventure game. We're kind of currently, um, well, I'm currently working through the first case. I've been on this one probably two and a bit hours now. Uh, there's six cases in total, and the play time has averaged out to be about 12 and a bit hours. So I think I'm probably taking longer <laughs> than is expected. But what I thought I'd do is just play through some of my gameplay here so obviously there is going to be some spoilers from the first case um, but I just want to show you some gameplay and performance and just talk to you a little bit about what this game is about so obviously it's based on Sherlock Holmes it takes place in the late 18 or the mid late ugh, mid 1890s uh, set in London of course Baker Street and you control Sherlock Holmes you've got a variety of uh, views you can uh, have this third person view you can press b to go into first person view which is quite handy when you're looking at stuff you've also got these enhanced views for when you're doing investigations and then there's this view here particularly when you're looking for clues that get highlighted while you're holding down the left button this is your uh, home at Baker Street, and there's various things you can do here. You've got a uh, an uh, analysis table over here. We can do some sciencey stuff when that crops up, and it does crop up in the first case. You've got Watson here you that you can Patrick talk to. Ken's the harpooner. You've got uh, rather curiously this telescope that you can spy on people with. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and you've got your faithful uh, Basset Hound Toby. And then over here, which is a cool little feature as well, you've got like a library. So you've got a research library, the letters that you get, old newspapers that he's kept, and encyclopedias. And you can go back to use these to sort of um, investigate evidence and research evidence and stuff, which is really cool. And if you go to Sherlock's bedroom you've got a makeup table where you can put disguises on and then a wardrobe here where you've got a variety of outfits again you can use these outfits you can change into them at any time but there's also some here that you need uh, in sort of collaboration with the disguises as well That last one is actually locked, so we'll go back to our basic one. But, you know, again, really nice little thought-out feature. And that's kind of what you're going to get with this game. Lots of nice, unique little features um, that you can use in investigation. It's it's good, like, police work and stuff, so you're doing investigations. Let's uh, just go to a location. So we press X to bring up our casebook. I'm gonna, not going to try and sort of um, settle on any of these pages too much because I say there is spoilers here for the first case. Um, so if we just show you the map, you can fast travel around any of these areas. And this is probably where I'd raised my first negative. I've not got many, but I've, I've got a couple. And that is that when you do travel around these areas, there's uh, a, a loading screen basically for every time you do a fast travel and as you don't really know exactly where to go some of the time um you're kind of jumping from place to place hoping that you're gonna you know stumble across the next clue that's gonna you know progress the story but it isn't always obvious so you can end up sitting in loading screens for no reason but if we go to our tasks uh, da -da -da -da. let's head over to scotland yard and you'll see what I mean. I'll leave this loading screen in. I'll try not to do too many because obviously 
no one likes loading screens and you don't want to sit here watching a YouTube video of a loading screen. But you get this kind of view here of like uh, Sherlock smoking, sometimes he's reading a book. From here you can also open up your case book that we were just looking at. So you can actually do stuff while the game is loading in the background. And you can also open up your deduction panel. Uh, this is one of my favourite things in the game. Uh, we may as well talk about this now before we get uh, into the next section. So basically, all the evidence you collect, all the pieces of evidence, are uh, sort of floating around in Sherlock's brain here. And this first section here, you can connect two of the pieces of evidence together. So for example, there we're trying to connect the missing papers with a character called Patrick Cairns. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, it gives a little bit of explanation and that didn't work. So Patrick Cairns has now got a red line for it. You can try multiple of these. So now we've got a good connection. And this is the bit that I really, really like about this game. And this is one of the best sort of investigation sort of things that I've ever seen in a game of this sort of type. Basically, all the things that you connect. So when you do connect two pieces of evidence together and they don't contradict each other, you then get to this sort of mind mapping screen and you can click on a, 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 a thought, I guess it is, and you've got a choice here of how you feel the evidence uh, actually reflects what's going on in the story. So for this notebook, you could say that there were multiple attempts to make to recover a notebook or alternatively, you can say that the person was looking for papers that belong to his father. So, you know, a nefarious kind of way of looking at it and a more innocent way of looking at it. So when you pick one of these, the nodes will start to connect. So this node here, because I went for the, the leftmost option, it's kind of connecting out of the left side of the node and joining up with here, this thought here, the stolen valuable papers, to form a new thought, which is this one here. So these two pieces or these two thoughts when I combine them with this you know this line map in here you then get a new thought you know off of those two pieces of evidence now which of these is the right thing you know is John Nelligan did he have a motive for murder or is he the victim of circumstance so he's innocent so you get to choose one of these Okay, that one didn't work out, but you can change them at any time. And again, that leads to connecting more mine nodes. And eventually you get to this uh, conclusion. When you get to this conclusion, you can actually then go and accuse one of the suspects. And the thing I really like about it, apart from all of this is really interesting and a cool mechanic to play around with, you get different scenarios play out and you can actually accuse the wrong person so it's not a foregone conclusion you really have to think about the evidence and collect enough evidence and link it all together before you come to an ultimate conclusion who you know someone you can accuse really really cool and again won't labor on that too much but yeah really cool mechanic in this game and actually been loving playing around with that and really thinking it through and it's a really nice mechanic as well because Sherlock Holmes is a very thinky sort of character and detective. You know, always one step ahead, always mulling over everything. So it really plays into the, the feeling of actually being Sherlock Holmes. So I really, really like that. You can see the top right hand corner, we've got this like little mind map icon and the wire. That means you've collected enough evidence to be able to accuse somebody. So you, that's just an alert there to, to show you that. Now, in terms of graphics and performance, as you can see, the graphics aren't bad. I mean, as you know, we said at the start, this originally came out in 2014. Actually, for the Switch, it feels pretty good. The performance is really good. There's no slowdown or anything like that. It's just that loading issue uh, when you're going between areas, even going between rooms sometimes, which can be annoying. I went back and watched a few reviews of the original release. I never played this originally and everybody kind of brought up the, the slowness of the loading, so it's been there forever. These are the suspect's belongings. So we're in the police station now, we're at um, Scotland Yard, 
and the suspect's belongings. We've got a couple of suspects here and you can examine their belongings. You can again link them together with other evidence that you found at other sites. And that all goes into that mind mapping section. And then you've got your suspects down here that you can interview at any time. Just going to jump to the final location just so I can show you something else. Uh, Woodman's Lee. One of the other things you can do with a character you're interrogating is you can um, kind of assess their character, which I don't exactly know what the point of it is as such it, it feels like a bit of a wasted mechanic you kind of just scroll over their body and pick out you know quite obvious things so if they've got a tattoo your cursor highlights and you know you make a note that they've got a tattoo and then when you've collected you know somewhere between five and ten of these pieces of information for a character you kind of i guess you've analyzed them i guess and you know you know a little bit more about them but that to me is a bit of a, a wasted mechanic. But what is kind of a, a, a good mechanic are the amount of little mini games that you get. So there's lots of little puzzle mini games to do different things. So whether it's picking a lock, whether it's putting a puzzle together. Um, there, was a, there was a puzzle here. I don't know if I'll be able to do it again as I completed it. But yeah, there was a basically some sort of item on here that reminded Sherlock of an advert and you had to kind of shift the perspective of a, a picture so it all lined up and sort of jogged Sherlock's memory to where he's seen it before so stuff like that's really cool lots and lots of those puzzles and again from watching the review of, of the later cases you know they carry on and, and you know there's lots of different puzzles they're not repeated so there's lots of variety so really cool game I say there's only six cases so it might feel like um, there's you know not going to be the, the hugest amount of gameplay but this is only i think this is 22 pound in the uk 25 dollars in america so it's not a full price game it's in that kind of nice mid-range price so and i say i've really been enjoying it i mean i've read a few sherlock holmes books I'm, I'm not a massive sherlock holmes fan but i quite like you know police investigations and stuff and this is really hitting the nail on the head for that sort of thing the investigating part is cool this particular first story has been excellent. As I say, I was expecting, you know, half an hour for the case to be, but this has stretched on for a good couple of hours so far. Already had a, quite a few twists and turns, uh, and I still don't really know exactly how it's going to play out. So it's really interesting, and there's lots of say, lots of different mechanics you can use. So check it out. I would say if you've not played this one before, like I haven't, I'd kind of heard of it on other systems, but I'd never really played it. But it might be the perfect time to pick it up now. And play it handheld as i say performance wise it's good graphically is good sound wise is really nice got some nice music and nice ambient sounds so yeah check it out this is sherlock holmes crimes and punishment on the nintendo switch give me a comment below if you've got any questions and i'll try and answer them for you and also leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new of course it'd be really appreciated but until then, thanks very much for watching this overview, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.